As the sun comes up on the Pier 33 service yard, we're about to start a technician's competition. The first ever Pier 33 wrench off. Three boats, four men, lots of tools, spare parts, and a big effort to bring these three boats back to semi-runnable condition. We've got three boats that have been in our yard for some extended period of time because they were abandoned or neglected or in some other way unused. And now it is a challenge for these technicians to get each boat running. We have a Four Winds 245 Vista, a Sea Ray 270 Amberjack, and a Trojan 28 Flybridge. This Trojan is a 1978 boat, has been inside our building laying fallow for about 12 years since this boat was last run. It's got a pair of Volvo engines and Volvo stern drives. It's now 8.15 and the technicians are ready to begin. Dirk is first into his boat as he peels back the covers on this Sea Ray 270 Amberjack powered by a pair of Mercruiser 4.3 liter carbureted V6s. This is a boat that's been out of the water for about five years since it was last run and Dirk's going to try and get these engines fired up today. Working on the Trojan, Rich and Dave. The dream team. The dream team. <laughs> since their boat has sat the longest and by the luck of the draw there will be two men assigned to this boat. And Caleb Casper's got, uh, he's got a couple of tasks ahead of him before he can really get started. This Four Winds Vista. Found one. Got a 5.7. Caleb's got the engine compartment open. Pulled your first plug. Do you know what you got in there? Yep. Yeah, a little dirty. We're going to try and replace those right away and get the, some fresh plugs in there so we got a good fire. It looks like Caleb has successfully found a key that will work in the ignition. So Dirk, what's your plan of attack here this morning? What are you starting with? I'll put a battery in and see what I got to work with. Okay, good starting point. None of these boats have been sitting on charge. They've got old batteries in them. Who's got keys for their boats? You got keys? Yep. Richie, you got keys? I'm looking for mine. Ah. Dirk's got his bypass tank ready and it looks like a fresh battery. Rich and Dave got a pretty unique configuration in this old Trojan. Here we go. All the way over to the right. One of them's cranking. They're both cranking. Both are cranking. The challenge for each of these guys is to get their boat running so that it will idle for 15 minutes at least at normal operating temperature, oil pressure, and be able to shift and steer. Dirk's cranking. Let's see if we got any juice in these old batteries. Nothing. Caleb just gave the key a turn and there's nothing left and the battery's in the boat. So he's going to have to come up with some way to power it up. Then we got the water hoses off. We're going to go directly into the back of the motor because the water pumps are mounted on the front of the engines. So with that oh. being said, we can... You know, we don't have to pick it up from the uh, lower unit. Okay. So those water pumps look like they'd be pretty difficult to access, is that right? Uh, we're hoping, if that's the case, that we can go through here. Oh yeah, okay. mounted right on a crank in the front. Okay. So. so you got your booster pack hooked up already? Yeah, we got life into both of them. Yeah. They both, they both cranked over. Sea Ray is pumping away. We can hear the water pump running. 
So we know he's got good juice. I just put a good battery in. Ah, uh, by means of a fresh battery. Caleb's just run for a fresh battery for his four winds. Handy can of O'Reilly's Carbon Choke Cleaner. We'll come in, it's an essential piece today. I think there's a can on each boat. Wow, did you see that? <laughs> Go ahead. Port engine on the Sea Ray. Dirk trying to get fuel to it. It's cranking over. And now coming from behind, we just heard a little puff of puff of engine out of Caleb's four winds. He's going to get his water supply to it right now, making sure the passage is clear. Caleb's hustling to get his water turned on. My timer ready. And we are all, we are less than 30 minutes into this challenge. There Caleb goes. He's up and he's in. You're in gear. Wow, the four winds runs. And I'm, I'm standing alongside Pier 33 shop foreman Jamie Horwath. So Jamie, you spotted that he wasn't pumping water. What's he going to need to do next? Uh, impeller change. Have we got an impeller ready for him? Yep, he's got it in his box. Okay. He requested it yesterday. So Rich, what are you doing when you're pinching off that line? What's the point of that? It's getting too much gas. One of the carburetors uh, needle stuck. Team Trojan seems pretty satisfied with their work so far on that port engine because now they've moved on to the starboard. And we're back with Caleb on the four winds. Caleb, it looks like you're improvising a little bit. I saw you climbing up here with a fresh hose for the cooling system. What do you got going on? I'm going to see if we can uh, bypass the impeller and get her running with the hose straight to the, to the engine. Okay, that seems to have worked for Team Trojan so far with their work down there on the Volvos. Yeah, so we're going to see if we can get a nice water supply to this and get her started back up and running and get her to fit too. connections ready. We'll check back in just a moment to see if this little end run has been successful. And while we are away on the four winds, Dirk has suddenly got that port engine running. Fuel delivered. Idling smoothly. And while we are away with the Sea Ray firing up, Caleb got the four winds running again. He's got water and he's pumping. That was a really good choice to bypass the impeller. Okay, so Team Trojan is pretty close. Starboard engine sounds like it's running great, right guys? Yeah. Okay, port engine, what do we think has got to happen? That carburetor's got to come off. The carburetor's got to come off of the port side? Yeah. yeah okay. Because uh, the needle's stuck either shut or open. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to take that apart and try and clean it up a little bit? Yes, sir. Okay, have at it. I'm going to hook the intake hose back up to the engine real quick and then try to clear her up. Oh, 
Caleb's looking to take over the lead, but he doesn't have the right hose clamp up there. Comparing sizes and checking his connections. All right, we've asked Pier 33 shop foreman to climb on board the real time two and let us know if that port engine is still now within spec. Caleb just fired up. We're pumping. He's pumping water. Let's start the clock at 9.07. Caleb's running. Oil pressure. He's got a fresh impeller. These guys are competing for bragging rights and a little bit of cash. This is amazing. Less than an hour in. Checking back in on Team Trojan here. Carburetor. The carb is out. That's off the port engine, right, Rich? Yes, sir. Okay. Dirk's got a water supply now to his starboard engine, so he's moved on, ready to get that one running. This is going to be a first, second, and third place event. some fuel to it. That's not good. Turning the key and nothing happened. What are we missing? Take a peek in the engine room and check out the gauges. Absolutely purring. Temperature's at about 160. Shop foreman Jamie Horwath has certified the engine is running per the rules of the contest. Sounds good. Caleb, congratulations, you're first place winner. Right. Way to go. <laughs> yeah, looks pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so Team Trojan now has the starboard engine running in the vat successfully. I think we've actually started the clock on that. It'll be 15 minutes of runtime. They are still working to try and get the carburetor ready on the port engine. And over on the sea right here, Dirk successfully certified, qualified his port engine. Starboard engine runs great, pumps water, shifts into forward, 
but won't stay running when it's shifted into reverse. Okay, now on Dirk C Ray, we have verified that we will shift into reverse and stay running. So we've just started the clock. He's got to maintain operating temperature and oil pressure for the next 15 minutes. And if so, it looks like that will qualify Dirk for second place. All right, we're back with Team Trojan. Rich has done what he could for this carburetor. He's reinstalling it now. Starboard engine seems great. I think we've got that one. Uh, I think we've got that one set and ready. Dave's re-rigging a water supply for the port engine so we can determine that it's pumping on its own. And in just a moment or two here, Rich is going to have that car reinstalled and they're going to give it a try. Okay, shop foreman Jamie Horwath has indicated to Team Trojan that they are qualified on their starboard engine. So now they're going to switch the fuel supply over. Dave has rigged muffs in place to see if he can get these muffs to stay on and deliver enough water to the engine for it to pump. And Dirk's got just a few minutes left before his starboard engine is qualified, which would then earn him a second place finish. These two guys are working hard to complete the challenge. Dave's checking the water supply. Let's see. Jamie says he's good. So Dirk takes second place. Well, Team Trojan, I am sorry to inform you that the other two boats have already qualified uh, by the rules of the contest. So you are the third place finishers, but fellas, I got to tell you that as it turns out, you had the toughest task of all. This is a boat that had been sitting for the longest. We were doomed from the beginning. That's why, since I picked that, but God, I hope I don't get this boat. Uh -oh. yep. Got it. But you know, given that, in a span of about 90 minutes, you got both engines running. They both yep. shift. Nothing's overheating. This might make somebody a good old boat. Oh, yeah. Yep. Did you take care of that trap yet, Caleb? You want that on video? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, you All right, so Cab's got a couple of challenges before he gets going. This Four Winds is a boat that was most recently run. Oh boy. <laughs> that was most recently run about three years ago and has been sitting shrink wrapped and winterized ever since. <laughs> and we'll be back in a few minutes when we see the first steps that our technicians have taken.